The golden age of piracy, lasting from the year 1650 to its eventual decline in the year 1730, is one of the most iconic periods in world history. The classic image of a pirate, accurate or otherwise, is instantly recognisable the world over, and the pirates themselves, both fictional and real, have been immortalised in television shows, movies, books, video games, and legends. Like many areas of history, much of what we do know about pirates is steeped in myth. This is a topic that we've covered on this channel in passing before, but today we're going to be delving much deeper into it. The media, specifically books and movies, have skewed the public's perception of what a pirate really was. As pirates lived outside the jurisdiction of the law, there is not a wealth of information available on historical individuals to begin with. But once we get caught up in the dramatisation and romanticisation of pirates in popular culture, fiction becomes perceived fact very quickly. You'd be surprised just how many of some of the most iconic images of pirates have sprung entirely from works of fiction. Join us as we take a tour through time to explore just how popular culture has impacted our perceptions and ideas of what pirates are from the Golden Age. We will be taking a look at the most influential and well-known pieces of pirate-related media in this video, specifically some of the most important books, films, and games. Please note that this video will contain spoilers for several pieces of pirate-related media, including Treasure Island and Pirates of the Caribbean. So if you haven't already, it's advised to come back to this video after exploring those first. Welcome to Walk the Plank. A General History of the Pirates In 1724, Captain Charles Johnson, likely a pen name themed around the subject of his writing, wrote perhaps what would come to be the most impactful piece of literature on the topic of pirates. A general history of the robberies and murders of the most notorious pirates is actually one of the most important historical sources for those looking to develop their understanding of some of the most infamous pirates and their crimes. It would go on to become one of the most influential pieces of writing for later authors, some of whom we will explore later in this video. There are several complications with this book, however. Firstly, very little is known about Captain Charles Johnson and his life. Although the book was published in the Golden Age itself, the author has been criticised for giving many of the pirates in the book an overly dramatic, almost legendary persona. It's important to remember that throughout the Golden Age, pirates were causing a huge stir in the waters of the Caribbean, and many tales of them would have been passed from sailor to sailor, from ship to ship, port to port. Tales of pirates such as Blackbeard, however, have been blown so far out of the water over the course of history, and much of what we know about him has come under scrutiny now that a greater understanding of Golden Age pirates has been attained. A general history of the pirates covers all of the most notorious characters of the Golden Age, many of whom you will have heard about in our previous videos. And Bonnie, Calico Jack, Blackbeard, Charles Vane, and Edward Lowe. They all feature prominently in Captain Johnson's book, where their lives and crimes are explored. It's widely considered to be the first work of pirate fiction, despite the fact that it's written as a historical record. Many of the records of existing pirates have in later years proven to be exaggerated or dramatised, with many crimes written from a theatrical or mythical standpoint. In later editions, the author even began to include pirates who did not exist at all. The fictional captains James Misson, William Lewis, and John Cornelius feature in the book, none of whom we have any historical evidence for. The book was an early introduction to many fictitious elements that we now associate, falsely, so closely with piracy. Among other pirate tropes, the book introduced the ideas of pirates burying their treasure to hide and dig up later, the notion that pirates were often missing legs or hands, and the use of the Jolly Roger flag. While some pirates did actually fly a Jolly Roger flag, it was not as prevalent as a general history of the pirates makes out. The fact that this book is not entirely accurate or reliable still does not rule out its value as a good historical source, however as this was the first known instance of writing regarding Golden Age pirates. Johnson's book is useful in showing us what people thought about pirates in times gone by. It would seem, in fact, that they were just as revered, feared, and romanticised then as they are now. Treasure Island While A General History of the Pirates might be the first example of pirate-related literature, Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, a tale of buccaneers and buried gold, is by far the most famous. This adventure novel was initially released over the years 1881 and 1882 in Young Folks, a children's magazine, under the pen name Captain George North. It follows the story of a young boy named Jim Hawkins who finds a treasure map. Following the map, he goes on an epic adventure to seek out the treasure, with the accompaniment of the pirate cook Long John Silver. It is even today the quintessential piece of pirate-themed media known the world over as the book that started our obsession with the Golden Age. 
While Treasure Island may be a great story, and it's certainly an influential piece of media in its own right, it does unfortunately leave a lot to be desired in terms of historical accuracies, and has shaped our perception of Golden Age pirates perhaps more than any other piece of media. Many of the myths surrounding pirates come from this book, in fact. In the book, the one-legged Long John Silver stages a violent mutiny against Captain Smollett on board his ship, the Hispaniola. Mutinies have since become a popular trope in pirate media, with the brutish, aggressive captain often being forcibly removed from his position as head of the ship, or killed in the process. In fact, there's little reason to believe that such a mutiny would have been popular, or even necessary, in the first place. It's known now that many pirate ships, when facing disagreements or difficulties with their leaders, elected a new captain rather than push the current one out with violence. Such mutinies, as the one described in the book, were very rare, and as dangerous as pirates could be, they were often civil to one another. Pirate ships came equipped with their own sets of laws and codes according to the crews on board, and to break them would carry dire consequences, even for the captain. It's not just the dramatisation of violence and revolt that Treasure Island threw into the mix, however. The book introduced many more trivial, light-hearted aspects of pirate life into our understandings of the Golden Age. Long John Silver, in the novel, is known, for example, to carry a parrot around with him, sat atop his shoulder. Known as Captain Flint, the parrot would often cry out, pieces of eight, in a classic pirate fashion. This is, as you might have guessed, entirely fictitious. No known pirate is reported to have carried a parrot around on their shoulder, and yet this has become a staple in many portrayals of pirates across the media. Pirates did, however, keep animals on board the ship, namely chickens and pigs, to keep themselves well fed whilst out at sea. But sadly, pirates aren't known to have featured. Plus, pirate ships were likely noisy enough places as they were without the addition of avian companions. The book also helped to fabricate one of the most famous phrases associated with pirates, Shiver me timbers! While the phrase was already in circulation from a lesser known book, Captain Frederick Marriott's Jacob Faithful, a novel published in 1834, Robert Louis Stevenson implemented the phrase throughout the course of Treasure Island. Along with this were variations of the phrase such as shiver my sides and shake up your timbers, generally used to express shock or surprise. Pirates of the Caribbean There is no piece of contemporary media as popular and influential to the pirate genre as Pirates of the Caribbean, an action-adventure film series based on Walt Disney World's theme park ride of the same name. A total of five films have been released to date, directed by four filmmakers over the course of the franchise, and are to this date some of the most viewed and highest grossing films to have ever been made. The story follows the exploits and adventures of Captain Jack Sparrow, iconically portrayed by Johnny Depp, as well as his crew and associates Will Turner, Elizabeth Swann, and Captain Barbarossa. The films are widely known to incorporate myth, legend, and supernatural activity into their plots, and it's made very clear that large parts of the plot are designed to be a product of fantasy. But still, you would be surprised as to how many liberties are taken with the finer details. Pirates of the Caribbean has helped to further what books such as Treasure Island started, and has skewed many facts about pirate life into our perception of how these people lived. While some of the pirates featured throughout the film franchise, namely Blackbeard, were indeed real people, many of the facts surrounding their portrayals are fictionalised. Blackbeard in the franchise is a victim of this. He is the main villain of Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, where he is ultimately killed after an encounter with the Fountain of Youth. In reality, he met a grisly end at the hands of Lieutenant Robert Maynard, and is not known to have had any affiliation with supernatural beliefs, superstitions, or practices. The same can be said for the British Navy, who are frequently shown to be buying into myth and legend in the films. Several issues also persist with these ships the pirates travel upon. Many of the vessels in the film franchise are way too large to be functional as pirate ships. A lot of pirates opted for smaller, more agile vessels that could quickly weave in and out of danger, so the reality of these pirates operating massive frigates is an entirely fabricated one. What's more is the fact that the crews in these films seem to be far too small to deal with such a demanding vessel. Such ships would have required hundreds of men to man them, which is something that not many pirates had at their disposal. A lot of the way the pirates in the films behave can also be scrutinised. Take Captain Jack Sparrow, for example. He is inefficient and often makes mistakes that cost him and his crew dearly. He is in fact more of a comedic character, disorganised and clumsy when it comes to executing his plans, and does not seem at all fit to be in a position of power. However, captains of pirate ships were relied upon to guide their crews to safety in the midst of great danger, and a captain that continuously failed to do this would have been democratically removed from power without question. Sorry, Jack Sparrow. Captain Barbarossa is also seen on numerous occasions to be aggressive, demanding, and verbally abusive to his crew. He berates and overworks them to the point of exhaustion. 
Again, this is not something that would have been tolerated on board a pirate ship, but nor is it anything that actually typically happened. Pirate captains, whilst aggressive and intimidating to their targets, could not afford to behave the same way to their crews. They needed to keep their shipmates on side throughout even the most dire circumstances. An undermanned ship was almost certainly a doomed one. Captain Hook He is the iconic villain of Peter Pan and the star of films in his own right, but how much of his character is fabricated for dramatic purposes? Captain Hook, maritime leader of the brig Jolly Roger, has become a picturesque character embodying the golden age of piracy over the years. Armed with a hook for a hand and an aggressive temperament that could put even Davy Jones in his place, he is the famous scourge of Peter Pan in the dreamlike world of Neverland created by J.M. Barry in 1902 and famously adapted by Disney in 1953. Captain Hook is famous for, amongst other things, his iconic hook. You'll be unsurprised then, and probably just a little bit disappointed, that real pirates did not have hooks, or any other weapon, in place of a missing hand. Even prosthetic wooden legs are a work of fiction, and whilst it was entirely possible for a pirate to lose a hand or a limb in the process of boarding a ship, these were not replaced. The technology was simply not available to cleanly and safely replace a hand or leg with a prosthetic one at the time. Hook is also known for his tendency to make terrified victims walk the plank, a punishment that would see the target cast over the side of a ship into the seas below after creeping along a wooden plank. Again, this is not typically something that pirates engaged in, and offenders were dealt with in a multitude of other ways, many of which were no less violent. Captain Hook was given these properties and behaviours to make him more memorable and scarier as a villain. What's more is Hook's name, a moniker earned from the loss of his hand and its subsequent replacement. Whilst pirate nicknames did exist, look at Calico Jack and Blackbeard for example, they were very rare. The vast majority of pirates opted to sail under their normal names, and it was usually only pirates of great fame and status that opted for any nicknames, many of which were presumably given to them as a result of their status or notoriety. Pirate Video Games Over the years, much more recently, pirate-related video games have begun to flow into the mainstream media. Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Sea of Thieves, and the upcoming Skull and Bones are a few examples of these, many of which continue to influence our opinions and perceptions of Golden Age pirates. Treasure maps, for example, are a large component of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which would have not been used in historical times. Pirates would have taken all their treasure at sea from opposing ships. They would have kept their treasure on board the ship, then spent it as soon as they could at port on supplies and luxuries to replenish their energy after long months at sea. The game also falls victim to viewing the world of piracy as very black and white. Some pirates are seen objectively as good and bad, and the British and Spanish governments are portrayed as the villains of the story. Outro So that's a rundown of just how some of the most popular pieces of pirate-related media have influenced our perceptions of the golden age of piracy over the years. From peg legs to parrots, there are many, many tropes included in these books, films, and games that, for better or worse, did not exist in real life. How many were you aware of already, and which ones came as a surprise? As our understanding of piracy grows, perhaps we will come to uncover more myths surrounding these feared marauders of the sea. But given piracy's mysterious and undercover nature, this is a hard thing to do. For now, let's appreciate these popular pieces of pirate media for the entertainment they bring to us, and wait to see what can be uncovered in the future. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank, I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!